There's never been a console like the Xbox Series S. Not to be confused with the Series X, this much smaller and much cheaper next generation Xbox doesn't just sacrifice an optical drive, it's significantly less powerful than its bigger sibling and aims for upscaled 1440p resolution instead of true 4K. The results are mixed. Depending on how you plan to play, the S might make a ton of sense, and it's only $300 instead of $500 for the X. But for anybody who's serious about gaming on Xbox, its shortcomings may leave you kicking yourself for not springing for the Series X instead. The Series S's hardware is similar to the Series X's RDNA 2 architecture, but its CPU is clocked down and it has less RAM. In short, it's a 4 teraflop console versus the Series X's 12.1. Think of it like a base model car with a V6 and very few options compared to the fully loaded V12 that is the Series X. The difference between the S and the X is, well, black and white. It's significantly smaller, even smaller than the Xbox One S, but there's no disk drive, so there's no way to install disk-based games or watch Blu-rays. I wouldn't call it ugly, but its shape and appearance is slightly awkward in sort of an adorable way. The large black air vent on the top makes it resemble a speaker more than a console. On the front, there's the offset power button and one USB 3.2 port. On the back, it has all the same ports as the Series X, the HDMI out port, two more USB ports, an Ethernet port, a storage expansion slot, and of course, power. Thankfully, there's no brick. Of course, sharing ports with the Series X means there's none of the Xbox One's TV pass-through or optical audio here either. For a controller, it uses the exact same one that the Series X does, and it's compatible with just about all of the Xbox One's accessories. Setup and transferring games from an old Xbox is easy, especially with the slick smartphone app. At first glance, the Series S seems capable enough, though it's clearly a step down from the Series X in image quality. I connected the Series S to the same LG B9 4K OLED TV I used with the Series X, and to my eyes, the upscaled image quality was noticeably muddy compared to the crisp, clean, native 4K of the Series X. As always, you get what you pay for there. It actually looked better connected to a 1440p gaming monitor with no upscaling. However, I was pleased to see that Gears 5 vs. Multiplayer and The Falconeer are able to run at 120 frames per second if you're willing to take a hit in resolution, just like on the Series X. I did see some minor screen tearing and mild frame rate choppiness in the Falconeer at 120 frames, and in Gears 5's Versus at 120 frames as well as the 60 frame per second campaign, I spotted noticeable dips here and there. It wasn't anything major, but it's a worrying warning sign that a brand new console is already missing a few steps. Through all of that, the Series S maintained the same whisper-quiet noise level as the Series X, registering just 38 decibels in Dirt 5 while its temperature topped out at 55 degrees Celsius in the same game. On the Series X, it was 40 decibels and 42.5 degrees Celsius, respectively. Both outclassed the Xbox One X, which blasts out 62 decibels and 56 degrees Celsius. The interface is basically identical to what we've had on Xbox One for years now, so it's an unexciting upgrade there, but it's dependable and fully featured. The main advantage the Series S has over the comparably powerful Xbox One X is that its loading times are identical to the Series X. And that is to say, very, very quick. And that includes the wonderful quick resume feature that allows you to resume right where you left off in any of the last several games you've played. It's all just as life-changing on the Series S. The downside, though, is that you've only got a woefully small 364 gigabytes of usable space to install games and apps on, and that can go quick. 
I was at 96% capacity with a total of eight games, five beefy blockbusters and three smaller indie games. That's even with Microsoft's smart delivery system that lets developers tailor their games specifically to the Series S. Gears 5, for instance, is only 55.1 gigs compared to 71.9 gigs on the Series X because the S doesn't need the full 4K textures. Your mileage may vary, of course. If you play a lot of smaller indie games off of Game Pass, you can still load up a bunch of them. Sure, you can expand the storage using the slot on the back, but the one terabyte Seagate expansion card is a horrible buy with the Series S. If you're willing to spend another $220 on one of those, you'd be much better off just buying a Series X instead. To be clear, you can use a USB 3.0 drive as a pack mule to stash games you aren't currently playing to avoid having to re-download them later. In fact, I recommend that you do. By the way, you can also play your back catalog of Xbox One and Xbox 360 games straight from that external USB drive, but you won't gain any of the loading time benefits that way. All in all, the Series S offers plenty of present day value considering it only costs $300. It's limited to 1440p resolution and has a claustrophobically small storage space, but it's tiny and quiet with snappy load times and can play games at up to 120 frames per second if your TV can support it. I'm mostly concerned about its long-term viability. Games are only going to get more demanding going forward, so the Series S isn't something I'd recommend as your main gaming platform. But that doesn't mean it doesn't have its place. The Series S is an excellent second console, like if you want something for a kid who plays on a smaller screen, or if, for example, you have a PS5 but want to occasionally dip into the smorgasbord that is Xbox Game Pass. As long as you're clear on what the Series S's strengths and limitations are, it's a unique, budget-friendly way to take your first steps into the new console generation. For more on the next generation of Xboxes, check out our review of the Xbox Series X and our unboxing of the Series S. And for all of your next-gen gaming needs, keep it right here on IGN.